Well, it's a burning question for family, friends, and investigators. What happened to 58-year-old Leticia Martinez? Now, she was last seen with this man, Brett Glitchell, at the Seattle Mariners game on March 31st. Now, Glitchell, now behind bars, prosecutors accuse him of being linked to her disappearance. And a quick timeline of events according to court papers. Martinez met Gitchell at the Seattle Costco in Soto back on March 19th. Then on March 31st, she texted a photo of her and Gitchell at the game to a friend. Yesterday, Gitchell was taken into custody at a Costco in Shoreline when he was shown the selfie taken at the game. Court papers say he admitted to being at the game with her, but said he didn't know where she was. Tonight. Court documents reveal more on the case. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Nia Wong. And I'm Matthew Smith. Uh, Fox 13's Zach Anders has been working on this story behind the scenes for a few days now. Zach, it sounds like we're finally getting a better idea of what exactly is going on. Yeah, incredible new details as the prosecutors paint the case for murder against 46-year-old Brett Gitchell, who refused to come down from the jail to the courtroom this afternoon. All of this while we still don't know where 58-year-old Leticia Martinez is. She was last seen with Gitchell Friday night at that Mariners game. Yeah, this is a pretty elaborate first appearance document. Leticia Martinez missing for a week as the county moves to build a case against Brett Gitchell. Ms. Martinez Cosman is a medication dependent diabetic. She's also the mother and primary caregiver for her son. But also know that it's an ongoing investigation and and as additional evidence comes in we can go back to the court and, and, sh and show that to them. And tonight the kidnapping of her adult son is revealed by police. Court docs show an unknown male identified only as having facial hair and wearing glasses comes to their home Sunday morning around 2 a.m. More than 24 hours after Leticia was last seen, he gets inside the house, knocks on his bedroom door, and tells her son his mother has been in an accident and to come with him to the hospital. Leticia's son, now in the passenger seat, says they drive for what felt like hours until stopping. The man claims to get water. Instead, he comes around to the back seat. Now he's trying to strangle him, uh, and one with the, something he puts over his head. And what's based upon what the defendant says to him, which is that in regards to... I'm doing this for your mother uh, so you don't get institutionalized. And only after being bitten and injured was he unable to overcome Patrick, uh, which allowed him then to get out of the vehicle and call 911. Gitchell reportedly has cuts and bruises on his hands. As the son is brought to safety by Renton police just two hours later in Beacon Hill, the Seattle Fire Department responds to a car fire. It's Leticia's Honda. They determine the fire was set intentionally. On Wednesday, police move in on Gitchell, being held at a Costco in Shoreline because Costco staff believed he looked like a known jewelry thief. He's taken into custody there. At the time of his arrest, Gitchell had a wristband on from the game, but told police he hadn't been to a Mariners game in 20 years. I denied going to the Mariners game, but Leticia went asked by detectives, and he actually claimed not to not recognize her until he was shown a photograph of her, which at that time he then admitted that he was at the baseball game with her. The attention now turns to his cell phone pings, a warrant revealing he was both near Leticia and her son's home when he was kidnapped and near Leticia's car when it was found on fire and that there's an hours long drive up by 90 into the mountains and back Saturday after the ball game. I'm told tonight that's where this search is taking place basically between here and Ellensburg that cell phone data providing a lot of info but still no Leticia from the from Seattle tonight Zach Anders Fox 13 News. So Zach mentioned that Gitchell told police that he traveled to Ellensburg on Sunday. That was two days after Leticia went missing. During an interrogation, Gitchell said that he lived in that area for years, but recently had been staying with friends. Now, searches are underway at anywhere that he may have stopped between Seattle and Ellensburg. We're hearing from several sources that investigators are specifically looking in the Snoqualmie Pass area. This is a big area, though, and it's not the easiest to look through when you consider the terrain and all the weather conditions up there.